I'm Outback. I'm gonna show you what it takes to get out alive from some of the most dangerous places on Cybertron. I've gotta make it through a week of challenges in the sort of places you wouldn't last a day without the right survival skills. This time, I'm in the remote Sea of Rust, where I'll tackle tough terrain, explore for Energon, and confront some of the most carnivorous cons on the planet. The Sea of Rust is a remote area in southern Cybertron just west of Kaon. Once part of the ancient Quinison Empire, it has one of the lowest population densities of anywhere on the globe. Only the strongest and toughest survive here. Over three quarters of the Sea of Rust is just desolate wilderness. It's thousands of square miles of desert with almost no habitation. If you get lost out here, you're all on your own. The Sea of Rust boasts over 1,000 species of cyberbiological life forms and very few species of cybernetic creatures. Seacons, alicons, and at least eight types of poisonous insecticons. This is where the Decepticon military used to do their desert warrior training. And down there, some of the most desolate, difficult terrain in the world. If you can survive here, you can survive anywhere. This will be the ultimate desert challenge. Blades is going to put me down in the middle of nowhere, and I'll have to make my way back to civilization while surviving in this wasteland for the next seven days. I'm going to repel. It's a classic Autobot army entry into hostile territory and requires pinpoint accuracy. I'm over 500 feet up with nothing but hard metal below. Once I'm safely on the ground and I've cleared the cables, I can give Blades the all clear. Then he's on his way. My first priority is to get my bearings and plan my next move. We're at about 5,000 feet above sea level here. What we need to do is get down there. It gets as cold as negative 100 degrees Celsius during the night and as hot as 300 degrees during the day. You would think the fastest thing to do would be to transform into vehicle mode and just roll out of here. But if you were stranded here from a ship crash or low on energon, that would be the worst mistake you could make. If you tried to drive a fly out of here, you'd run out of fuel before you'd ever reach a city. The Sea of Rust runs 100,000 kilometers in every direction. If you didn't starve, you'd either roast alive or succumb to one of the deadly life forms that live here. If you want to find your direction, just check the metal formations around. It's called the Sea of Rust for a reason, and as you all should know, rust only grows on the north side, which means we need to head in this direction. Now that we know where we're going, we have to find some shelter and find it soon. The suns are going down and the moon bases are coming up, which means a drastic change in temperature. I got a nice spot here, but I need to get some heat going while I can. What I'm going to do is blast some of the surrounding metal surface with my laser rifle. It will retain heat for several hours. I found some scrap sheet metal, probably from a craft or even a Cybertronian, that I'll use to make a lean-to. It's the most basic of shelters, but it will do for us to survive the night. I need to dig down deep to stay out of the wind and cold, or I could very easily join the landscape as a pile of rust. I don't have any tools, but thankfully, being a G1 character, I can fix any plot all by magically creating a tool out of my hand. And once I dig down deep enough, I'll bury the heated piece of metal just under the surface to keep my shelter warm, and hopefully, the burnt metal smell and smoke will also keep the critters away. You want to go with something like a shovel or axe because a tool like a drill would use too much energy on, and you want to conserve as much as possible. It's now 0300 in the middle of the night, and I'm literally freezing. Luckily, I had a full supply of antifreeze before coming out here, but it's just impossible to get a stasis nap under these conditions, but I'm going to try anyway. I have to be mindful of any dangerous life forms sneaking their way in here with me for the heat, but it's a risk I'll just have to take to survive. You could also pull the seat covers from inside your vehicle mode for some added insulation. And it's also added protection from insecticon bites and scraplets. It's now morning. I didn't get as much sleep last cycle, but any rest at all helped conserve energy. Now it's time to find some breakfast. Since liquid is scarce here, we're going to have to look for energy on elsewhere. Look here. We found a nest of scraplets. You don't want to eat these. They're poisonous and can kill you. Whether by swarming and devouring your metal bodies, or by ingesting them where they could spawn and devour you from the inside out. Better just leave these guys alone. Ah, here we go. This is an insecticon. This little guy may not taste very good, but it's packed full of energy on that my spark really needs. You don't want to tangle with a full-size one of these. I once heard a story of an Autobot that ran into a swarm of these things back on Earth and devoured all the metals for miles. Right now, I'm going to devour it. Let's give it a go, shall we? Mm. Tastes like scrumptious, delicious metal.
That's rough on the way down. Ugh. 